So we got uh, a lot of we got more news to get to. So let's just hop right into it as we continue with as we continue with the rivalry that ended. But uh, on an undis uh, well, and a dusty finish last time. So we get get back and do it again. But with that being said, I'm just gonna get to the. CM Punk news now, as CM Punk lashed out at AEW, claiming that John Moxley refused to put him over at uh, the week before, I, I would assume the week before, or at All Out, he refused to put him over, and the fact of the matter is, they went over what happened the week before All Out, they, uh, Punk mentioned that, Punk mentioned uh, Mox having a week, uh, a whole lot of stuff. Honestly, I don't really know what to think of it, and I don't really have an opinion on it, other than the fact that if any of it is true, what, however you look at it, it makes all. It still makes all parties involved not look the best. Not look the best. Because I understand legally. I understand that legally there are some, in some cases where they may not be able to talk about certain things, but the fact of the matter is, if Punk was encouraged to compete before being cleared, there is no excuse for that. Whether it's, whether it's a squash match or not, there is no excuse to encourage your talent to compete without being cleared. There is no excuse. There is no reason to do it. It's a terrible idea. It is a horrible idea. Because you can even, while they're cleared, you can still run the angle of them being injured if they just came back from an injury. But, God forbid, they get injured and get injured worse because they weren't cleared. <coughs> you know, it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense why you would even risk it. But also, Punk should not air his dirty laundry in that way because he should have learned his lesson from when he did it with WWE. But also, AEW should have learned the lesson from when he did it with WWE that he would have done it in the first place. You know, he that he would have done it and not hesitated. And that's a fact. Because that's... I mean, I, I again, I don't really have an opinion on it. If, you know, I think that they should all be adults about the situation, if they can be, and iron it out like adults. Talk out of the public eye, because whatever happened in that window, it's none of our concern. Because a lot of fans just want to see things work out and things get better, rather than things be in the position that they're in, or everything be in the situation that it's in. And that's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. But now we shift over to WrestleMania weekend as I spoke about at the end of the last news video with the Josh Alexander news, the devastating Josh Alexander news. We have the multiverse of ma the multiverse match, uh, the joint show with New Japan and Impact Wrestling starting off WrestleMania week next week. And then Super Card of Honor on the Friday from Ring of Honor. The first pay-per-view since Final Battle from Ring of Honor and the first on the Honor Club. Also, we will we will be doing more than likely a go home uh, a preview for the go home edition of SmackDown for WrestleMania before WrestleMania, as well as the normal Rampage preview that we do every Friday. Also, Saturday, in NXT Stand and Deliver preview, night one of WrestleMania. And then the following night, WrestleMania Night 2. It's going to be a busy couple days next weekend as we approach the great, the most important night of the year for wrestling fans. And also, as we spoke about during the news video last uh, uh, yesterday, also on April 2nd, it's the Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame. The second class for the Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame is set to be inducted on April 2nd with Excalibur and Mike Modis being the newest inductees announced for the Hall of Fame. But it's going to be a busy week for any content creators, 
specifically in the wrestling realm, because it is our favorite time of year, because the content just keeps coming. Unfortunately, one person that will be missing impact, uh, over WrestleMania weekend is Cora Jade, as Cora Jade, according to Dave Meltzer, is suffering from an undisclosed injury, as that is the reason why she has been off TV since January. Um, it is, again, un an undisclosed injury, and unfortunately, this likely means that Cora Jade will be not a part of WrestleMania this or NXT Stand and Deliver this year. And I, for one, whatever the injury is, I, for one, wish nothing but the best to Cora Jade in the hopes that she can get to be 100% before long. Speaking of WrestleMania, though, and undisclosed injuries, Bray Wyatt's undisclosed issues will, at this point, keep him away from WrestleMania, more than likely. And there is a backup plan, according to WrestleVotes, as the backup plan, according to WrestleVotes, for WrestleMania, for Bobby Lashley... If Bray Wyatt is not able to compete, like many believe he is, will be unable to compete, will be L.A. Knight. And it is unclear what exactly L.A. Knight and Bobby Lashley will be doing, as some may think that maybe it'll be simple. You know, it'll be something simple like L.A. Knight comes out, cuts a promo, and is interrupted by Bobby Lashley. But the fact of the matter is, it seems like L.A. Knight and Bobby Lashley, according to WrestleVotes, again, is the backup plan if Bray Wyatt is unavailable. Speaking of WrestleMania, though, as we continue to wrap it up, WrestleMania, WrestleMania Night 1, a lot has been made about the possibility of, or the likelihood of, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn being the WrestleMania main event. But now the question is, but now the likelihood is that Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair will be the main event of WrestleMania Night One. I for one think I mentioned this in the in a previous news video where I basically insinuated that the likely reason for Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley being the main event is because the company does not want to lean too heavily on the bloodline. Especially if they're gonna go the separate way, if they're gonna have the bloodline have a wedge thrown in there um if they're gonna have a blood if they're gonna if the bloodline is going to have a wedge thrown in there and then not too you know soon after wrestlemania they would likely not want the bloodline to be the featured place of wrestlemania as a way to maybe have segments between you know as a way to have maybe segments between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens uh, defeating the Usos and Roman Reigns' title defense against Cody on night two because the one thing we know for certain is that Cody is main eventing WrestleMania night two against Roman Reigns one way or the other. So that is something that we know 100%. But the fact of the matter is we just don't know about WrestleMania night one. And with that being said, we also have a report on the upcoming AEW Saturday show, which will be on the 605 in the old 605 time slot. For those who may not be aware, Georgia Championship Wrestling, I mean, uh, Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling, used to be in the 605 time slot in that area every week. And Dusty Rhodes even went back to say, in the early, two th you know, 20, 30 years later, 20, 30 years on, or maybe even more than that, 30 years on, Dusty would still have people come up to them and say how they would watch Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling 605 every week. And a new report from Andrew Zarian of a Matt Men Pro Wrestling podcast previously reported that AEW could potentially see um, well, let's, uh, let's fast forward. It's just, uh, giving us an insight into stuff we already knew about. Uh, in the newest, uh, edition of the Wrestling Observer, this from Dave Meltzer, of course. Meltzer reports that the AEW's new Saturday show is planned. Barring any changes, it will debut in July, if not earlier. As of this writing, AEW's June schedule 
has not has not yet been announced. However, as a part of the company's return to Canada, it is advertising a televised uh, the six the six show tour in Canada from the end of June to mid July, as we spoke about in a previous news video. Um, this event does not have. Uh, wait. This, the company is advertising a televised event in Regina, Saskatchewan on, a, on Saturday, July, July 8th. This event does not have any branding attached to it, so it's unclear whether it will be a taping of Dynamite Rampage or the potential new show, which it could likely be the potential new show, but the question would more likely be... I mean, the, que the likelihood is... It is more likely that AEW would have the potential new show taped with Rampage and have Dynamite on its own now. On Wednesdays, instead of taping Rampage and Dynamite together, they would tape Rampage with the news show on Fridays and not have it where you would... Um, unless unless this news show is going to be live, which is possible, it would be you would figure that it would be taped with Rampage and not have Dynamite taped with Rampage anymore. But I guess it is the best way to put it the best way to put it is, like Fightful said, when we when more information is provided, as it becomes available, we will provide more information as it becomes available. There is one more video we have to get to, as MLW has some interesting news that I would like to break down in its own video to give them the opportunity to be spotlighted for the very first time in quite a while. So let's break down that, and I will see you in that next video.